Ahmed al Barai, let's go back a couple of days because Bashar al-Assad was in eastern Ghouta. And was that really to show the people of Damascus, these two places are very close to each other, that I can protect you? It was a kind of this. He wants to show the people of East Ingulta that I'm still the president and I do have the upper hand. And, uh, you know, it's the only place that you can be safe is to move to East Ingulta. More than 80,000 people have evacuated East Ingulta with the uh, humanitarian corridor that was given by the Russian uh, agreement. Move to uh, Damascus because it's the only place that is safe. If you remember when the Aleppo scenario happened, people didn't evacuate immediately because even now they know what Assad can do to them but still they decided to evacuate because it seems that it's a no return point it's a kind of desperate conditions that they have nowhere to go unless they move to Assad territories because it's the only places that they are not bombarded by any group do you see foresee a moment when Bashar's regime forces have regain control of enough territory, Eastern Ghouta is important to him, it's not far from his presidential palace, but overall in Syria, that they reach a moment where they regain enough territory where he can think, now I can negotiate. Or do you see a point where he will just want to destroy everybody who's against him and make it a zero-sum game I win, you lose. It's the, the formula was very clear, Adnan, from the very beginning. The supporters of Assad used to say, Assad or Nahrq al-Balad. It's either Assad or will burn the whole country. So the, the formula is clear, and they, he, the guy, he is going to go ahead with this, with Eastern Ghouta. He could have negotiated with bitter terms with these people, with the rebels, because it's, they're weakened. It's, it's a matter of time, and he will finish it. He went to Eastern Ghouta, and he spoke to the military, the commanders on the ground and telling them try to avoid to take every kind of a precautions to avoid civilians any harm now we know that at least more than a thousand people were killed by the airstrikes of the Russian uh, regime or the Syrian regime now he's coming and speaking about this but it seems at the end of the day that he is gaining more momentum again he has the upper hand on the ground and he's again in the international arena gaining more legitimacy coming back as the president of Syria. But I'll tell you something, if you look at the social media of the Syrian people, you have two groups, the supporters of the Assad, who say now, it's very interesting, that Assad is not the state, Assad is not the system. And if you look at the opposition, the people say the opposition is not the people, is not the uh, real representative of what we're looking for. So it is a kind of, still, you have the people who do have aspirations for reform, for democracy, for a change, for a political Political transition, and you do have those who support Assad who are fed up uh, of this, what's going on, of bloodshed, carnage everywhere. Enough is enough. We need to sit down as brothers. That's what they're talking about now, which is something interesting to see after seven years of bloodshed in Syria. Ahmed Albright, thanks very much.